Um, w one of the great changes in the uh, sort of Western world has uh, been the role of women in the last 50 years, and particularly uh, uh, their equal now access to sort of education has, uh, I think, made life quite a lot more complicated uh, uh, for women in terms of the fact that they have choices now in terms of professional um, which weren't uh, open to them previously. Uh, has this created the sort of same problems um, for people of your faith? And uh, how have you sought to dealt with Mental that? and knowledge, no problems at all. Because the Ahmadi women are permitted to rise to the maximum of their potentials. And the veils or philosophy of segregation does not stop them from rising to the maximum of their limits. Because according to our understanding of the Holy Quran, every man who has been granted some protection by God is duty bound to utilize it to the maximum. So how can ladies be exempted from that? Well, the Holy Quran says it another place that all that the rights of men, all no, and let me say let me repeat this way. The women have equal rights on men as men have equal rights on, on women. So this is the principle, the guiding principle of all this relationship. So as such, in Ahmadi society, you will find uh, Ahmadi Muslim girls who have uh, done their tripas from Oxford with, uh, you know, with outstanding success in a manner that uh, the Oxford University held a special program to honor that girl, Emily girl, who did her studies all in Vail. You see? <laughs> she went all the way to achieve the highest degree with distinction. And at that time, it was uh, uh, whoever represented the university, I don't remember exactly whether this was rector or somebody else, he said that she has created history. Right. Now, she was wearing veil, not only dressed decently like in the West we permit Ahmadi ladies to dress decently and not necessarily cover their faces, but she insisted that I can, I must prove to the world that the veil does not stand between me and my uh, healthy pursuits. So that is why I said, not to my knowledge in the Ahmadi community, where professional, prof, uh, Ahmadi professional surgeons, ladies, lady surgeons, Ahmadi professional accountants, Ahmadi professional lawyers, and the professional whatever you can think of and they do it while keeping to their philosophy of segregation from men so that their chastity is not uh, violated in any manner. See, that is the reason why the teaching of segregation is given in Islam only for the sake of chastity. If the chastity is left out untouched then the women can do anything they like in the world, right? Right, right. The, the, the but still there is some question on your face, what is that? Yeah, I, I don't sort of, from my background, quite understand the need for, the, for the sort of segregation. Um, in, in yes, that if you don't understand the need for segregation, look critically at your own society. Being a doctor, you should realize that the AIDS epidemic is spreading all over Western Europe, like in other uh, promiscuous countries, which is a result of free mixing of sexes together. 
Now, you may blame on homosexual people the spread of AIDS, but it is not true. It passes from one person to another in a society which is promiscuous. And the result is that so many houses are threatened by the potential danger of AIDS surfacing one day and uh, wiping, out, wiping out a large population from some such countries, I hope not in Britain, that uh, you cannot ignore the, ignore the fact that Islamic segregation philosophy is rightly taken. Because once it is permitted, then it knows no bounds. Once free mixing is allowed, then you can't stop anybody because the law of the land is on the side of those who take a free, irresponsible attitude regarding these matters.